Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Karnika Seth and I am a cyber lawyer and I practice in the Supreme Court of India. Uh, today we will be discussing uh, the module 7 which is uh, cyber crimes and contraventions. Uh, we will be also touching on the IT Act and discussing a brief overview of how this uh, IT Act is uh, helping in enforcement of cyber laws in India. What is cyber crime? To begin with, I mean this is an important question we all face today. What is e-crime or electronic crime? It is uh, basically where a crime is committed using the computers or where computers become a target of crime. Now, this includes offenses which earlier used to be offline. You will have blackmail for instance or uh, even theft. Uh, data theft is today a very rampant problem. Now, these kind of offenses which were offline earlier have now become online. So, we will be discussing the various uh, aspects of this law and how these crimes are percolating uh, our society or uh, we are facing these problems today and how the law is, is existing today and how we can combat this problem in the country. Now, when we look at the statistics uh, in the data, uh, the Norton Cybercrime Report 2013 uh, basically has given a glimpse of the direct cost of cybercrime. It is estimated to be around US dollars 113 billion. That is the average cost of loss cost to a victim of cybercrime in this year. Now, if you look at the IT Act, let us have a look at the IT Act. When we talk about the chapter 9 in the IT Act, it talks about civil wrongs, which are contraventions, and cyber crime is covered by chapter 11 of the IT Act. Now, here the difference is basically that where there is malintention, cyber crime gets involved, and wherever there is no malintention but maybe a negligence which is causing an act, the act itself has caused loss to someone. Which will, uh, in, which will entitle the victim to seek compensation for the same, it will fall under chapter 9 of the IT Act. Now, that is uh, the basic difference between cyber crimes and contraventions under the IT Act. Now, let us have a look at the new section 43A, which has been inserted in the IT Act by the amendments, uh, which took place in 2008 and 9. Now, this section uh, it is an oblig puts an obligation on the companies or the corporates to maintain reasonable security practices for uh, ensuring that there is no uh, harm caused to or loss caused to any data, no confidential data or sensitive data of anybody is lost. And specially, uh, they have to in install within their you know, systems and infrastructure and the whole IT infrastructure which they create. Uh, ISO 27001 certification. This will enable them to ensure there is no leakage of any confidential information from their companies. Now, here if you look at the IT Act's rules, the latest rules which have been caused you know passed in this respect, there we have the reasonable security practices and sensitive personal data or information rules of 2011. Now, these rules uh, basically envisage and they stipulate that this is the ISO certification which is required and there would be uh, other practices, security practices, how do we maintain confidentiality of data. This is particularly emphasized. Now, when we look at further down section 44 or 45 of the IT Act, they talk about penalties. Penalties go up to 1.5 lakhs for failure to furnish any document or a report to the controller or the certifying authorities. And there would be uh, in case of failure to file return for instance or furnishing any information or books or other documents within time, there are penalties prescribed. Now, section 46 basically appoints the, uh, the uh, empowers the adjudicating authority to exercise its powers and decide what is the quantum of compensation payable to a victim if there is a a contravention made uh, as per the IT Act. Now, this officer basically is the person who is uh, responsible for 
deciding uh, the uh, quantum based on the damage caused to a person, the amount of uh, damage apart from the damage, the number of times the harm has been caused to the person and the, the uh, repetition of the same and otherwise also considering the entire circumstances of the case, he would decide the quantum. Now, this now shifts us to the next uh, area which is important here in the IT Act, we are dealing with cyber offenses. Now, IT Act prescribes and various punishments for various kinds of offenses. If you look at section 66 for instance, you have computer related offenses. The term hacking as such has not been uh, kept within the IT Act, uh, the reason being that uh, this is uh, you know there was a debate between white hackers and black hats and it is uh, something that we all uh, we are facing them I mean, world over this debate whether do we keep this word hacking for ethical hackers or for the violators. So, this is something which IT Act has kept silent on and the, the hacking term is not there uh, in this particular uh, definition or the title of section 66 and it has a wider ambit where it says computer related offense offenses. Now, we also have other sections under the IT Act for instance, we have section 66 C dealing with identity theft. Uh, 66 F dealing with cyber terrorism, then 72 dealing with breach of confidentiality and privacy, 66 A particularly talks about hate speech and offensive speech which is menacing to uh, anybody uh, including spamming and 66 uh, C and D have been talking about cheating by personation, identity theft and such other issues. Then we have section 67, 67 A in particular dealing with sexually explicit content or pornography and 66 B we have uh, you know we have dealing with child pornography, uh, 66 E for violation of privacy and uh, 67 B in dealing with child pornography, 66 B is to deal with the uh, stolen uh, computer resources and other uh, you know uh, data, it could also include data and other hardware. Now, 70 talks about protected systems, protected systems uh, which are sensitive to the nation and uh, defense, these are uh, all you know dealing or fiddling with them or trying to uh, you know cause any kind of damage uh, in this respect, uh, they are all amounting to offenses. Now, these offenses have various punishments right from uh, there would be a punishment of up to 3 years or fine or both and certain offenses have even 5 years or uh, you know uh, extending to 5 years and from 5 years to about 7 years or 10 years also in case of repetitive offenses and therefore, uh, these are stringent provisions uh, which deal with or combat cyber crime in the country. Now, this takes us to the position that what is after all uh, the criteria of cognizability or bailability of these offenses. Now, when we see cognizability and bailability, we have CRPC to deal with it, but there is a special section which is section 77B of the IT Act, which provides that all those offenses which are punishable with imprisonment of 3 years and above, they are cognizable. Now, all those offenses which are uh, which are punishable with up to 3 years of punishment are bailable. So, therefore, if 67A talks about uh, sexually explicit content or there is cyber terrorism in 66F, now those are non bailable offenses which have punishment of more than 3 years uh, prescribed by the act. Now, if you see the, the new provisions which were you know added under the 2008 and 9 amendments. We, we never used to have a special section for say child pornography uh, in the IT Act. Now, that is something which has been added later on and I think that makes the act more effective. Now, today the debate is whether you know we all know that browsing adult content by an adult may not be an offense, but yes publishing it or transmitting it through an SMS or through videos, now that would be an offense under the IT Act. Whereas, in the case of child pornography, even browsing, seeking, creating, downloading, storing is an offense. Now, that is a little line of distinction which we all uh, need to understand here. And now, this takes us to section 65 in particular. Here, we deal with tampering with computer source code. 
Now, we all know that there is a binary language computers follow and there is a source code and an object code. Source code is like a DNA of a, a footprint or a blueprint of a particular uh, you know, computer. Now, or a program, computer program has a source code. Now, when the source code is hacked or tampered with, now that is something which is punishable under the IT Act. Now, there are many cases uh, which have been reported for ha hacking or tampering with computer source code documents. Now, there have been cases like uh, the, uh, there was a case of uh, this Tata, uh, you know, phones where uh, Reliance and Tata had a dispute and uh, there was, it was alleged that the Chinese phones were, uh, you know, of, of Reliance had a very, very strong, uh, you know, coding which allowed only the Reliance network to function on those uh, cell phones. And uh, in between there was a scheme launched by Tata, where it was alleged that the Tata was uh, basically trying to uh, take away certain information by tampering the source code and uh, enabling the same handsets to work on Tata's networks. Now, this is a reported case and uh, there have been cases uh, like, you know, involving section 65 of the IT Act, wherein certain uh, reverse engineerings have been done, where which would amount to say tampering of source code documents. Now, therefore, you have to see basically in section 65 whether a source code is really involved or is it a general hacking. Now, this particular section is mainly to deal with source code of documents or hacking of a software where the source code is tampered with. Now, if you look at section 66 of the IT Act, which talks about computer related offenses, it is very wide. Uh, when you talk about hacking, for instance, that would be included in this because it if, if, if it is causing uh, say unauthorized access into a system, if, if someone is causing damage to a system or the confidential information is taken away unauthorizedly or introduction of a virus happens, disruption of a system, denial of access attacks, even time thefts or uh, one would say destruction or alteration of a computer source code with the intention to cause damage even section 66 would get invoked in that respect. Now, if you see the cases, there have been again cases like the Abhinav Gupta versus state of Haryana, wherein it was alleged that the employee had uh, steal, uh, you know, stolen certain confidential information which belonged to his ex-employer and shared it with a competitor. Now, this, these kind of cases again reported judgments are there. One where one would read and see that how the section 66 can get invoked in uh, cases where the basic ingredients of the section are fulfilled. Now, if we see section 66A in particular of the IT Act, now that talks about uh, sending any grossly uh, offensive information or any email, for instance, or an SMS which contains anything which uh, would be of a menacing character or offensive. And now here, if a person is sending some information where he knows that this is it's something which is false, but he's deliberately doing it to s annoy someone. Now, ma malintention is very important in all these offenses. Now, if that particular content which he deliberately puts there, which he knows is false, is causing enmity, it, it is in order to cause insult or injury to somebody. Now, that will be uh, again attracting section 66A of the IT Act. Also, spamming is covered here and therefore, if somebody is, uh, you know, guilty of this offense, uh, one would have a punishment of up to three years and also fine. Now, there is a case uh, pending before the uh, Honorable Supreme Court of India uh, called Shreya against Singhal versus Union of India, wherein this section 66A has been particularly challenged uh, for its unconstitutionality and the judgment is yet to be delivered, but the questions are very important. Uh, what is the ambit or what is the real meaning and scope of the words such as offensive or harmful or, uh, you know, menacing? Uh, what is the extent of its meaning and how one should understand that? Will not every little uh, annoyance also be included in section 66A is what is being challenged under the uh, particular, this case. Now, it is yet to be seen how the court reacts to this and what kind of guidelines it lays down. I think that will help clarify the, uh, this uh, lacuna or this gray area better. 
And then uh, let us move on to section 66 B of the IT Act, which is receiving stolen computer resource. Now, that not only applies to any data which is stolen, it applies to any hardware or a communication device, including a cell phone, which may be stolen or a laptop, which may be stolen. Now, uh, many times law enforcement uh, will be probably invoking this section for uh, you know stolen laptops and this rightly so, because uh, it has a punishment of up to 3 years and fine up to 1 lakh or both. Okay, after this section 66 B of the IT Act, uh, we have section 66 C and D. Uh, these sections mainly deal with identity theft and cheating by personation. Now, in case a person for example, puts a fake profile you know on, on Facebook or any other social media sites. Now, that amounts to an identity theft and particularly if, uh, uh, if, if it is causing any, any kind of, uh, it has been put with a kind of malintention that uh, would cause harassment to the other person or any kind of defamation or any kind of annoyance, uh, this section normally get invoked. Now, if uh, there is a say theft also possible by uh, electronic signature, somebody steals away or misuses the electronic signature or a footprint of somebody else. Now, that is also something which is punishable under section 66 B of the IT Act. Now, the term of punishment uh, one could be liable for punishment of up to 3 years and fine up to 1 lakh or both. Now, if we see um, section 66 E of the uh, IT Act, the invasion of privacy. Now, here particularly the MMS attacks, I mean these are uh, very, very uh, important to see, because here if somebody is invading the privacy of another person and without his or her consent, uh, captures any images, creates any images, transmits them or publishes them in print or electronic media, uh, images of any private area of any person without the person's consent, which is violative of the privacy of such person. Now, these are illegal acts which will be punishable under section 66 E of the IT Act with punishment of up to 3 years or fine of 2, uh, two lakhs or both. Now, here if, um, if there is a hidden webcam for instance uh, installed in anybody's rooms or uh, any kind of CCTV footage without the consent of the person uh, in, in such areas where uh, there is a uh, generally an assumption of uh, privacy is also something which will be covering this area, section particularly. Here now we will be discussing the section 66 F of the IT Act, which deals with cyber terrorism. It is a very widely worded uh, section, it, which provides punishment of uh, you know, which may even extend to imprisonment for life. I think this is the most imp, uh, severe uh, strictest punishment, which uh, one sees under the IT Act. If any person here uh, with intention to threaten the national sovereignty, integrity or security of a nation or uh, uh, harm its unity or to strike riots or terror in the people causes any kind of harm uh, including denial of service attacks. Now, that is uh, this section which will get invoked. If any person with this intention will access a computer without permission or exceeds the authority which is given introduces any virus or contaminant, which uh, is likely to cause death or injury to persons or destroys any kind of property, which is public property or essential services delivered with the help of uh, IT systems. Now, that uh, it would be affecting critically the sensitive systems or the critical information infrastructure of the country. Now, that is something which is an offense again under the IT Act, which is uh, section 66 F will cover uh, under the umbrella of cyber terrorism. Now, uh, this also includes uh, uh, such situations, where a person knowingly or intentionally would access a computer resource without any authority or would exceed the authorization and steal information, which is confidential to our nation's security or friendly relations with other states or which is likely to cause any uh, injury or, in, you know, to, or loss to the integrity of the nation or security of the nation or public order as such, the decency or morality of the nation or content uh, relation to contempt of court, defamation or incitement to an offense, which would be uh, covered all by the cyber terrorism. 
it is a very widely uh, worded section that is the reason I said so. But when we look at uh, any kind of disturbing videos, for example, uh, videos which would invoke uh, communal or anti-religious sentiments or uh, something which would uh, cause a public riot or something which would uh, hamper the nation's security. That act which when committed through the use of networks or computers or uh, any kind of communication media would also uh, fall under section 66 F of the IT Act. Now, this takes us to section 67 which is publishing of any obscene materials on the internet. This section is basically uh, providing punishment uh, whenever there is transmission of uh, any kind of uh, obscene content, anything which is publishing electronically any kind of content which is harmful uh, in the sense that it is uh, uh, not uh, public uh, for, for the purposes of uh, viewing decent. Uh, therefore, uh, this section will be invoked in those cases uh, which will provide a punishment of imprisonment of about 3 years and fine up to 5 lakhs or both. There have been a few uh, cases which particularly have dealt with section 67 and um, there have been many FIRs registered under this particular section, where uh, in, in cases of investigation sometimes even forensically uh, some data has been found that an email has originated from one computer to another person's computer by way of an email some obscene material has been sent and such uh, sections will get invoked like 67. Now, the famous uh, uh, case you know the first case which probably has occurred in this uh, particular area has been the Bazi.com case which is a DPS MMS fraud case and uh, long time ago this was a, a video clip which contained an obscene material uh, which was listed on the Bazi.com site and uh, involving school children and uh, two school children. Uh, now, this had some obscene materials and uh, when the FI was filed under section 67 of the IT Act, the section 85 also got uh, attracted and uh, section 292 of the IPC. Now, here uh, when a person uh, deliberately puts a commercial, commercial video online uh, in order to uh, basically uh, make commercial gains, but it is an obscene video. This would fall under section 67 of the IT Act. Uh, it was uh, uh, initially the, the director of Pathy.com was arrested for these offenses. However, uh, later on in when the case uh, was decided in appeal in Anita Hada's case, the court took the view that under section 85, uh, in case an offense is committed by a company, the director cannot be made uh, personally liable in case the company itself has not been impleted as an accused. Section 67A deals with publishing any sexually explicit materials. Now, this would include any kind of videos or clips or, or small uh, uh, recordings uh, which were visual recordings and tr transmitting them uh, online by SMSs or any kind of messaging services available or emails and uh, this is again punishable with imprisonment up to 5 years of and fine up to 10 lakhs um, in the IT Act. Now, the next uh, section here we have is 67 B providing uh, you know uh, for the offense of child pornography this is a uh, providing punishment for that. Now, here the punishment is up to 5 years and fine up to 10 lakhs uh, of rupees. It is a very deterrent punishment uh, for the reason that child pornography is an offense which is very heinous and uh, prohibited world over. And there have been uh, insertions of such similar provisions even in other countries um, and therefore, Indian IT Act has also now uh, has, has a separate section for dealing with child pornography. Now, here we see that even browsing, copying, downloading any kind of uh, child pornographic materials selling or renting or viewing or collecting all this is an offense under the IT Act. Section 67 C, here is the liability of intermediaries for failure to preserve any data. Now, in case there is an intermediary who uh, intentionally or knowingly does not preserve the, or retain the data which is required by the law enforcement like the central government, 
liable for punishment by way of imprisonment up to three years and fine. Such acts are liable for punishment. Section 71 deal with the penalty for misrepresentation. Now, if a person is misrepresenting or he deliberately suppresses some information which is material, uh, does not reveal it to the controller or the certifying authority and uh, he is liable to a punishment of imprisonment for up to two years or fine which is extending to up to one lakh or more. Section 72 and 72A particularly deal with uh, the penalties for breach of confidentiality. Now, in this case, uh, when there is um, a confidential information, a public officer who is empowered by the IT Act, which he holds and he uh, deliberately uh, discloses this information for his own purposes uh, or own gain, uh, which is unauthorizedly done. Now, that is something which is punishable uh, under breach of confidentiality by section 72 and 72 A deals with similar punishment, where uh, the uh, person who is disclosing the information is not a public officer empowered by the IT Act, but a private service provider. That is the distinction between the two sections. Now, section 73 and 74 of the IT Act, they deal with a penalty for illegal acts which are connected with electronic signature certificates. Now, here there is a punishment for uh, publishing any electronic signatures which bear any kind of false particulars. Uh, the imprisonment is up to two years or fine uh, up to one lakh or both. Section 74, it provides punishment for publishing electronic signature certificates for any fraudulent purposes, uh, which again is punishable with a term uh, extending up to two years or fine of one lakh or both. Now, in a nutshell, when we summarize this model of uh, module of uh, say say module seven on cyber crimes and contraventions. We can summarize it in this way that uh, whereas section uh, 9 would deal with uh, deals with the contraventions, uh, section 11 in fact deals with the cyber crimes. And uh, they are uh, the difference between the key difference between the cyber crimes and contraventions is that whereas cyber crimes are dealing with mens rea and actus reus that is a mental intention to commit a crime along with the act itself. The contraventions are more like civil wrongs or the torts, where there may be a negligence involved uh, of the person causing a harm to the other and causing a loss, but does not have a malintention as such to do so. Now, uh, there are different punishments for different offenses and for contraventions as well. There are different penalties and new sections were added by the IT Act amendments in 2008 and 9 which have made the IT Act more uh, uh, updated and more abreast to deal with uh, the com or combat the cyber crimes which we are facing today. Uh, I, I, I would say that the, there are still many amendments required in the Act. However, compared to the earlier version, it does have many sections which uh, would uh, cover uh, most of the new offenses which have emerged in this area. Now, they are mostly cognizable, but then uh, the problem is that a lot of them are bailable. Uh, this becomes problematic, particularly in cases where the criminal is out on bail and he might try to uh, damper or damage any data, which is digital data and digital data is fragile, it is volatile at times. So, it could be easily damaged and that, uh, that is an apprehension which uh, law enforcement really has. So, in a nutshell, uh, the, the two chapters uh, 9 and 11 basically cover both cyber crimes and contraventions. Thank you.